Hello everybody. So this webinar has the title Walking Through a Case with the Mouse. And I will first explain a little bit what you may expect. So because of the previous webinars that we have given, basically to the Indian people, the Indian representatives, uh, an initiative of our key collaborator, Dale, the response or the request has been to really walk through a case as in real life and to, the, to do the A to Z so that people can really understand how the tool can be used in daily practice. And so this is the main idea. Then the second idea is to do it with the mouse. Radar Opus, as you may be aware, is the program of many possibilities. And this means, among others, you can use it with a mouse, with a keyboard. You can execute several functions in several ways. And now we will emphasize how to use it with the mouse. Why the mouse? Because the mouse, for many people, is the way to use a program in an easy mode, to use the program intuitively. And so we will show you how with a mouse you can do most of the things in our program. Most of the functions can be executed either with a mouse or a keyboard. Okay? So today we'll emphasize the mouse to emphasize easiness of use and intuitiveness. Okay. Now the program I will be using, the version I will be using, is here the version 2.0.35 that you see on the screen now. And uh, if you want to do all the things that I will be doing, you will need to have that version. Now, do you have that latest version that I am running? You can see it from the title bar here. Do you see my mouse moving here in the left upper corner? Where it is written 2.0.35. So, .35 is our final version of the 2.0 final subversion. If by any chance you would not have that version, you can go to our website. I'll quickly switch. And on the website, you see the uh, in the menu, you see uh, the download, uh, wait a minute, the download uh, button. And so you get to this section here, the download section. And there is a, an entry which is saying download Radar Opus 2.0. You see it here. And if you click on that link, you get the precise instructions and also the link to the file to download the latest version 2.0. Now, to be complete, we are at this moment in a certain stage of our release procedure that you see the text appear on the screen as well. The third stage where we are intermittently releasing or activating the live update. This means not all the time. Why we do this? It's one of our, shall I say, criteria to offer you the best possible service. The reason is that when we have a final version and we release it, we release it only from time to time and we wait for the feedback. And even if one user has a major problem, as it does occur that sometimes because of language, operating system, firewall, etc., etc., any type of combination has a problem that many other people will not have. If it's a major problem, we will solve all those problems and release another version even if it's for one user having the problem. Until we come to stage number four, where everything is running smoothly, no more support is needed, as you can read, and we'll switch to the live update 24 on 7 all the time. This means that everybody who starts Radar Opus will get an invitation to download the version 2.0, and this will probably be launched next week. So, if you don't want to do it manually, just wait for the program to push you to get the live update 
and you will be on the version uh, 2.0.35 that I am using today. If you happen to have an intermediate version because you made an earlier upgrade, please contact support, contact your dealer network. Yeah, let me show you this as well. Contact your dealer network here on the website on the tag contact and your local representative. You can find them on the map here. They will be very happy to assist you also with any questions that may come up with the uh, lectures that I'm giving. And so here are our representatives in the east part of the world. And you click on the little icon here, for example, in New Zealand, and you see Jesse Coleman, new representative since only a few weeks. And you have all the contact details to get in touch with the representative that will be happy to help you. All right, so that's for the introduction. Now let's start and run through a case. So what do we do when we run through a case? Well, first, this is the way Radar Opus opens. And when you open the program, this is exactly what you see. You are looking at the uh, first page of the repertory because in many cases, homeopaths want to first search in the repertory and repertorize. Okay. This interface, I'm not going to go into it very extensively, but the logic is five or six ideas that will help you to use the program in any place, any function. Uh, and uh, one of the ideas that you see here is the concept of the screen. So you have, as in most programs, a menu at the top where you can click on a uh, on an entry like take and you see the different entries the different commands okay below the words of the menu you have the command icons again you can click to execute certain commands we'll use them later on then at the left side you have the symptom clipboards which are used to save symptoms of repertorization and then in the middle of the screen, the major part is the content. Now, to use the program, you the best thing you can do is look at every screen that is active. So the active screen is the screen that is in front of you. And now, when you're looking at the repertory, what do you want to do? You want to find the symptom, okay? And here, at the left upper corner of the screen, there is this magnifying this looking glasses at the, the binoculars rather if you click on it you see the chapters of the repertory appear and then you can choose your chapter again by clicking using the mouse it is just one possibility and you click on the chapter mind and then you will see that all the rubrics of mind appear if you want to go back here is the, uh, the button to erase your choice. And you can click on another chapter like Vertigo, you see. So you can use the chapters, the letters, and the space back button to navigate. Now, once you have selected your chapter, you want to go and select a rubric. So let's take Ascending. I click on Ascending, Vertigo when Ascending. And this is a symptom of my patient. What would I like to do next is maybe go to this rubric. Yeah? You see, this is now the active window. You see, I can take it and move it. This is the window where you should look at. And here at the bottom, you have the possibilities. And one of them is to go to the document. If I click on it, I go immediately to the rubric. So this is a simple way, two clicks, to find the symptom vertigo ascending. Click on the binoculars and then click on the symptom until I reach the level that I like. I found the symptom. The next step is to take it. Again, different possibilities. The one I will use is dragging the symptom by clicking on it and moving it slowly 
to the clipboard here, the first clipboard, where I release the button. Okay. And you see below the clipboard now is a little one, which means the clipboard contains one symptom. This is one way to uh, take a symptom with the mouse. Now I will go on and take a few more symptoms of my patients. I go again to the chapter vertigo and now I use the virtual keyboard for a difference. This is a new feature of version 2. I can click on the letter T and it shows me all the levels 2 that contain or start with the letter T. And what I would like to use is turning when. And you see that the turning when is preceded by a plus. This means that if I click on this level, sub-levels will open. Okay. What do I turn? What does the patient turn? It is the head. So I click here on the level head. Okay. And now, again, I can go to the repertory to look at those symptoms first, as I did before, or if I want to go fast, and I know some of you want to go fast, I can immediately here go to the tick menu by clicking on the button at the bottom and decide that I take the symptom with an intensity one. At this moment, I see that the symptom clipboard has two symptoms contained. Okay. And now just to show you how fast and easy you can work with more symptoms. This is the symptom I'm looking at for the moment. Vertigo, level one, when turning, level two, moving or moving the head, level three. My patient has another vertigo symptom. So the only thing I need to do is click on the level that is common to this symptom and the next one. Like when it would be turning, I could hear turning side. See? Now, I have a symptom of turning already. It's a symptom of vertigo only. So I click on vertigo. And now I can click on another letter and say that it's about light, which type of light. And I click on sunlight. And again, I take the symptom straight away. So this is almost in in five seconds, eh, three, four clicks, that I can add a third symptom. Okay, so click on the level you like to keep, which in this case is the chapter, click on another letter, click on, you can also click on a second letter if you like. You see ME is the one that is retained, menses during aggravates and we take the symptom or we go to the rubric and now just to show one more different way if i'm looking at the rubric first time i was dragging the rubric onto the clipboard also here i can use the menu and in the menu select the take with intensity one so i have four symptoms in my clipboard so this is a way to find and to take a number of symptoms. The next step is that I would like to analyze, to know which remedies run through these symptoms. One way to do it is to click here on the command icon that I show you with the mouse at the top, in the middle more or less, you see the analysis graph icon. And when I click on it, my program analyzes these four symptoms for me and tells me that the remedies that are uh, covering these four symptoms are clonovinum and aloe. Okay. What is the next thing a homeopath may want to do is, well, to know whether clonovinum or aloe cover the patient. So one easy way to do it with the mouse is to click on the abbreviation glonorinum. Do you see where the mouse is uh, standing? And uh, you double click on it, as I do now, 
and this opens the keynotes of the remedy. And I can run through it. Does my patient have confusion? Uh, does, is there congestion? Is there worse from the sun? Is it worse in the menopause, etc.? And I can run through my keynotes to decide whether this case is fitting glonorinum or not. Now, it doesn't seem to fit glonorinum. So how do I go back to my analysis? And this is the second little explanation for which I ask your special attention. That is that the content has been tapped. It means divided in tabs. So now you see at the top of this content part of the screen, there is a tab which is saying glonorinum keynote. There is a second tab here which is saying synthesis. This is the repertory. If I click on this tab, I will see synthesis straight away. You see? If I click on this tab, it's a little graphical uh, analysis icon, I see my analysis again. So this is another clue to use the program in an easy way, is to be aware that all the content has been divided in a very clean and neat and organized way into tabs. Meaning that if now I click on Alloway to read the keynotes of Alloway, then of course the remedy will open and I will see my uh, text and keynotes of Alloway, but that content is added to the tab of the other keynote here on top, and a little arrow shows you that there are no two keynotes open between which you can choose. Yeah? It just falls off the screen, I see, but if you would do it, you would see that there is Alloy and Glonorinum here to the right, that allowing you to switch and read these keynotes as well. So a very easy way, just in the analysis, click on the remedy you want to know about. This is an also a rule. Double click on information to know about it and you read the keynotes of Alloway. And when I read this keynote, then I become enthusiastic and I say, yes, this is my patient. This is my prescription I would like to give. So what we have done so far, number one, we found symptoms with the mouse. Number two, we took them in several ways. Third, we analyzed them. We consulted the Materia Medica. The fourth thing is we want to save the analysis. Okay. So to save the analysis, this time I will use the mouse again. I go to the entry analysis on top here. And indeed, here is the entry save your current analysis okay when i click on this entry a dialog window opens and allows me to save the current analysis to a folder i will call this case the test of carlito okay of carlita because she had menses okay cannot call her carlito and as usual in the active window look around what can you do? Save is the button here. You click on save and that's it. The case has been saved. Now, how can I prove you this to you? Well, I can go to this clipboard and next to double clicking on information to see the content, you should also be aware that we have extensively used the right click in Radar Opus, allowing you to have access to many functions in many places. And when I right click on a symptom clipboard, a menu indeed appears and it shows you, for example, the possibility that you can clear this clipboard. This is exactly what I want to do. I want to remove this case, okay? This analysis. So I clear the clipboard, the four is replaced by nothing. And when I click on it, the clipboard is empty, okay? Now my patient returns. This is the fifth step. Find, take, analyze, save, and recall the information. It's very easy. The analysis menu has an entry, recall. Okay? And when I click on it, I get 
a uh, menu with the cases that I can recall. I type uh, Carlita. Here she is. I just double click on it, and here I see the reportation, the repertorization of my dear Carlita again. Okay. Now this is in half an hour. Basically, the, the essential use eh, of the program, repertory wise. Now I know for some of you, not many new things have come so far. It's also the most essential thing what everybody is doing in some instances. And I will now repeat how to walk through a case with the sum variations. And the first variation that I would like to say is that, of course, some of you will be happy to only save a few symptoms of a patient. And that's it. We save it. Patient comes. Next patient comes. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. But most of you would like to document a little more what has happened during the consultation. And this means that I would like to add some text to the consultation. Now, suppose we have first made the repertorization. Well, how do I add the text? How do I create a patient file? Well, I go back to the analysis. And when I say, I would say, I save it. I look at a different choice and the choice is that I can save the current analysis to a new patient. Do you see the second entry here and the patient doesn't exist yet and I can create here with uh, the same name Carlita uh, test. I can create a patient instantly. We'll say she is born the 1st of April, the 1st of January uh, 97, for example, and of course, we have to change the sex from male to female. All right. So Carlita test is there, born the 1st of January, and we save the analysis to a new patient. Now, this is, you could say, almost just the same as I did before. I only save the analysis, okay? But in fact, at the same time, I have saved the patient, created and saved the patient. I will show you now how this works. Again, I will clear the clipboard to show you the flexibility and the things you can use. And I will now open the patient file. You know, one of the prides of our project is that Trader Opus is repertory program, material medical program, and patient file in one. How do I change my repertory program that I have used so far into a patient program, patient file, just by here looking at the table of content icons. There are five, which is the patient one. I click here and I get a list of patients where I can just type again Carlita, few letters, and the patient with that name appears. Okay, so it has been created automatically which is quite easy and comfortable now this patient uh, i want to open it, this patient file what is the way to do it with the mouse just double click on it and at that moment i get an interesting message you just opened another patient file meaning a new one do you want to recall the last analysis of this patient and so it means that the program knows I did save an analysis to this patient. I say yes, and I see here that the symptom clipboard changes from zero to four because the four symptoms of my analysis have been made available, okay? And now I am immediately ready in the first consultation and can type a few uh, sentences uh, whenever ascending uh, a hill, uh, stairs, uh, etc. Okay, this would be one symptom corresponding to the patient. Then I can uh, tap and open the next line 
and write also just a minute also uh, vertigo with uh, every uh, what shall I say with every motion of the head okay. have to sit in a chair okay. or I can say uh, light orders me a lot cannot bear sun vertigo and so I write the words the words of uh, every uh, symptom in the language of the patient eh? mostly during the lenses okay. like this I can go on but I will not do it of course eh? and what I could do for example eh, that uh, uh, when there is some symptom very strong, I can put it in bold, I can even make it uh, a little bigger, whatever, or I can decide to s highlight this symptom with a second degree. Okay? So this is my consultation of my patients, and now I need to add a prescription. Okay? For this, I go to the bottom, at the prescription uh, tab, pops up and when I click in this rectangle you see a little arrow appears here when I click on this arrow a window appears where I can type a few letters like ALOE and when I click on other way the prescription has been added I can do the same for the potency where I can type 200 and uh, select the 200. If I like, I can even add uh, the scale, which is uh, Korsakoff in Belgium, and so on. More or less information. I'm totally free to add whatever I like. And then the second point is I can add a pathology. I click again in the rectangle of pathology. Open the list by clicking on the little rectangle on the little triangle and when I type the word vertigo it shows me the different types of vertigo in the official disease name catalogs and I choose benign paroxysm vertigo okay as you see here the safe is uh, there or here I can save this case and I have a full case Okay, why would I do this? Because you know that even as much as I like the repertory, the repertory is like only a summary, it's only limited language. And what I'm really interested in is the language of the patient. So this is the reason why I like to write the text of the patient as they express the symptom. And then uh, I, of course, I will add the symptoms to it. And this becomes even more important when we speak about mental symptoms. Because uh, the patient may say certain things and I may say, oh, this symptom is uh, jealousy. Okay, I take the rubric. But maybe next time patient gives me more explanation and uh, I may find that instead of jealousy, it's the delusion that the patient has suffered wrong. And I must choose another rubric. So if I save all my cases only with repertory rubrics, I save my cases with interpretations. Eh? So this is why I believe it's very interesting to add text to a patient file and to be able to retrieve the original wording of the patient. Okay? So anyway, I have a case. I have a repertorization. Uh, I have some consultation texts, I decided on the prescription on the pathology. So now I have a full case and I could close radar opus. I will close radar opus because I want to show you something else. But before I do, let me show you one other thing. Again, emphasize the importance of being aware of the tabs. Eh? 
So look here. Here is the symbol of the patient file. Here is the symbol of the analysis. So just one click and I'm looking at the analysis. Okay. Now you may say, well, I'm bothered by this table of content of patients. I would like to just read the analysis with possibly more remedies. Very legitimate, legitimate request. Well, then in Swiss, many windows and many programs, you only need to double click on this tab. You see Carlita test, I double click here and it takes the whole wideness of the screen. And still then the uh, tabs are there to switch to my repertory. It's just clicking on the synthesis tab. I am again in my repertory program. Click on the patient tab. I am in my patient file. Click on the glonovinum tab. I am in my Materia Medica program. So just the flexibility and the fantastic way to interact between the um, different parts of our program which I am now going to close. Okay? So I close the program here by clicking on the red cross at the right upper corner. I'm requested to do a backup. As you can see, I did it yesterday. We must emphasize again and again, please tell all your friends to backup every time you have made important changes because still it happens from time to time. Someone contacts us, computer crashed, whatever happens, they did not make any backup. I'm sorry, we cannot help you. You have to make the backup on a memory stick or an external hard drive. So please backup your data. I'm not going to do it now and I am leaving the program. Okay. Now, why do I do so? Because every time when I start a program, which will pop up on the background of the uh, map that you're seeing, the representatives. Every time the program opens, you are requested to enter a password. I know this is an option, and when you got this uh, little dialogue window for the beginning, you can say yes or no. I will protect my information with a password, yes or no. And we have been asking you again and again, and you could refuse again and again. You can virtually not reply uh, anytime yes. However, we would like you to use the password. And uh, I'll tell you why first. There are two or three reasons. The first reason is that in this way, your information is protected. Everything in Radar Opus is encrypted, also consultations, text, etc. So you're safe. The second reason to use the password is that the password gives you access to the cloud technology we use. As you may be aware, Radar Opus is the first homeopathic software to integrate cloud technology. For the moment, this is uh, mostly used to give you access to Clifical when you send clay cases to, into the cloud. But we will use it for an increasing numbers of features, also exchanging additions, etc., because it gives us a lot of security and flexibility and ease of use to integrate cloud technology. And third, for those who say, well, I don't need to protect my information, uh, it's on my computer in my house, uh, nobody is there. Be aware, please be aware that we as a manufacturer are obliged more and more in the United States and Europe to protect patient data. If we are as a manufacturer creating a program that is allowing our users to add sensitive patient health information, we must provide a certain number of uh, securities, among others, a password access. So, which means that even if version 2 is allowing you to uh, not use the password, we will have to impose it at a certain time in any next version soon. Okay. Now, that's the why. Let me tell you how it works. Personally, I am using a uh, password safe yeah, where I type Radar Opus and I see here my password of Radar Opus. All I need to do is uh, 
control V, as you see, the password is typed automatically and the program is uh, starting. Now, uh, many other programs, even just to go to the movies, uh, to uh, for your bank account, for whatever, so many programs, YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, all require passwords. So I believe it is a very good practice to uh, to have a password, uh, to use a password safe. Eh? And uh, the, the password safe that I have been using or that we recommend is called KeePass password safe. So please look here at the website that I am showing you and take a note of the uh, the URL. It is just KeePass with two S's dot info. You can download here the last release uh, of the password and uh, of the password safe and uh, you can um, uh, use it to save your password and print it automatically when you open many of your programs okay so this is hoping motivating you a little bit to use this password and all the technology behind it because when you enter it, it's basically one screen and everything goes automatic. Yeah? So it's a very easy uh, way to uh, proceed. Okay. So um, at this stage, uh, Carlo, are there any questions or items we should reply to? Are you aware of uh, anything that has come up? in the chat or is uh, anybody hey. you know you are totally free to write uh, in the chat all your requests i i have already one of the question is the question you are me frederick all, yes i hear people. you perfectly yes so uh, some people ask if there are some limitation in the consultation text i am asked for no limitation you can add uh, all the line that you want, all the symptom that you want. Yes. And uh, this is the first question, and there are no other questions. If you want to follow the regulation and the guideline uh, to protect your data, you have to look on the website of the IPA regulation, international uh, statement uh, that uh, define the guideline how to protect uh, uh, sensitive data. I, I, yes. I write in the in the chat. Yeah, that's important. Anything else, Carlo? No, no. There are no other no other question for the moment. Okay. So now I have closed the program. I started up explaining you the password, the importance of the password, and my patient comes back the next day. Okay. So I go to my patient folder. I type uh, Carlita. As I did before, I open the patient file. Yes, I would like to see the analysis. And I am in the old consultation. Okay. Now the patient comes back and I would like to enter a second consultation. Then I have to click on this little icon with the plus, which means add a consultation. And my patient tells me, uh, very uh, bossy. Uh, even as a child, eh, even when uh, playing games, etc. So I have a symptom, uh, desire of uh, spices. Uh, on any dish, and add some plushes, etc. And so I can now write my consultation. When she writes, she has a headache, and it is better from cold applications. And uh, it is uh, every few weeks. Uh, stays for hours. 
And so I get new symptoms. And as this consultation goes on, the second consultation, I can, of course, go again to my uh, repertory, which is just a click away. Do you see it here? The tab. And I can search, for example, now in the chapter head. And I click on the P to go to the section starting with P. I find pain. I click on the word pain. Now I click on the letter C. I can click even on a second letter, on a third letter. You see, I can, I can click on as many letters or as little letters as I like until I arrive at cold applications, ameliorates, and I go to this rubric where I see, happily see, that the main remedy is in fact aloe. Okay? So I am confirmed by my consultation, but if I do the analysis again, this time I did it by clicking on the clipboard, okay, I apologize for going quick one more time, but okay. So you can, as I say, many things are, Radar Opus is basically the program of so many possibilities. Eh? So if you click on the clipboard, it's another way to see the analysis. Now, what do I see now? I see that Alloway covers all the symptoms, but Glonoinome also has this headache better from cold applications. So I can, of course, read my keynotes again. But one other thing I would like to do now is just another possibility, is I would like to differentiate with precision between aloe and glonoino. And the way I choose now is to differentiate the vertigo symptoms of aloe and glonoino. So how do I find them in the repertory? At this time, I will use the search function. The access or one access to the search function with the mouse is clicking on this icon at the top. You see it? The search function. It opens the window. I prefer the window with the four boxes because in the, it's more organized and, and structured. Yeah? And I write aloe as a first remedy. I made a little mistake. Aloe as a first remedy, I hit enter and I type glonorinum and can possibly choose with the mouse between the different possibilities of glonorinum. And now I say here, eh, I limit it to case, chapter or pathology. In this case, I will limit it to verti vertigo. Uh, all chapters. In this box, when you want to define a chapter, always choose the one with all chapters, eh? because in some of the books, the chapter may be head and vertigo, or vertigo and head, etc. And so if you say all chapters, it will also consider the ones that are not just the word vertigo. That has no importance for your searches in the repertory, but it does have importance for your searches in the Materia Medica. Now, anyway, I am set up to search for aloe and glonoinum in vertigo in the current document, which is synthesis. I click on this icon here, the magnifying glass, and I see 14 symptoms here of vertigo indeed. And every time I see aloe, glonoinum, aloe, glonoinum, etc., I see the menses, I see the motion. I see the light ascending correct, so it's a perfect extraction, comparative extraction. But it is not the one I'm interested in. And so as much as I can specify things here for the remedy with the little triangle to the right of the remedy, like selecting certain degrees, etc., etc., which I will not do now, in the same way I can define the search uh, shall I say, the configuration of the search of the different remedies by clicking on the word remedies. Okay. See here my cursor on the word remedies. When I click on it, 
I see that in fact the default search was to look for the symptoms with all these remedies. And as it happens indeed, all the vertigo symptoms where aloe and glonoin are both present. What I would like to do now is to use the, to use the last option and that is to look for the symptoms which aloe and glonoin have in common but also the ones where they are exclusively present. And at that time I must launch the search again and I get different tabs here because different searches are performed at the same time. The first one um, here, I click on the tab of end, do you see end? Is again the 14 symptoms that I've seen the first time. But if I click on this one, I see as the tab says, the symptoms of glonoinum where aloe is not present. And then one way to work through a case is to run through the symptoms and ask the patient, uh, for example, is it worse in the open air? The patient may say yes, so I will tick it. And then I ask, uh, uh, is it with nausea? The patient may say yes, and I will tick it. And in the end, I will say, I take the symptoms with one, and my five symptoms increase to seven. Now, obviously, I must do the same and go to the other list, which is aloe without glonorinum. And then I ask, do you have uh, anxiety? Is there any anxiety? And the patient says yes. And uh, is it also on descending at times? And the patient says yes. And then the patient describes the sensation of being elevated and tells me, for example, it does happen after fright. In a way, I get more responses from my investigation of the vertigo symptom of aloe than when I am investigating the glonoin, the glonoinum list. Again, I take the symptoms, this time through the menu, and my number of symptoms now increases to 11. Which 11 symptoms? I click on the symptom clipboard, and I see now here, aloe still coming first, glonoin going down a little bit, and I have now a new repertorization. So, of course, uh, I would like to save it. And uh, when I save my analysis in the same way, save the current analysis, I will now say that I have to save it to an existing patient. Eh? You got it, Ed? Carlita is existing already. And here is Carlita. And I will save this repertorization to her, uh, uh, to a new consultation as the program is suggesting to me. Okay. Voila. It's done. And automatically the program even opens me the third consultation where I can say vertigo. How is your vertigo? Oh, uh, the vertigo is much better. But wait a minute, how was your vertigo? And I want to ask questions to this patient. And so this is another interesting feature, very practical and, and easy to use, is that in the patient file, I have a way to go back to the previous consultation and show them both on the screen. Let me show you so you better understand what I like to say. I click here on the tab consultation. You see it, this tab here? And this opens the previous consultation. Now, I am interested in the first consultation. So I will click on this first arrow here. And here I see the very first symptoms that she gave me. So. Now I can start asking the questions of the first consultations eh? uh, and I can write the assessment that the patient is giving me uh, still when ascending, uh, what shall I say, when ascending uh, stairs, uh, can walk hills, okay? Like this, uh, no more need for sunglasses. 
no more vertigo then. And like this, I can continue my consultation and compare, maybe check in the first, in the second consultation. I say, ah, yes, uh, what, is, uh, what is your desire of spices? And let's say it's a dream patient, uh, spices are less needed. And like this, I can compare my previous consultations with the current one. Okay, fantastic. Eh? And then um, I become very happy with this patient, uh, with this case, because it reacts so well. And I would like to evaluate the case. This is what we call the prescription evaluation. Do you see it here? I click on this balance, eh? judging, evaluating. And at that time, I get a list of the consultations with the symptoms. And I can say, for example, evaluate this consultation. And here uh, I have this pathology. And as usual, I click in the rectangle, which brings up the little triangle. You follow me? And when I click on the triangle, I say that there is a major improvement from this choice according to the Glasgow uh, scale. Okay, major improvement. Okay, and I save the case. Now, one other thing you may want to do, and this is that for many projects, is that I have become very happy with this case and I would like to share it with the community. That is only one click away through this icon here of Cliffical. Send to Cliffical. Look how easy it is. I click on this icon and this brings up a screen that already tells me it's all the way that the diagnosis is there that the consultation text is english that i can choose where to put it as an example for example yes i can add the title to it whatever but in fact if i do if i'm happy with the default values eh, i can just say send this case to clifical as an example look are you sure you want to send this case? Yes, and it's done at this moment. Thank you very much for sending this case into cyberspace, into the cloud. It is there. Eh? And as a last point, and I would like to hand over the questions again to Carlo and to you, I will now go to this famous uh, cloud here. Uh, this is the Clifical database. Eh? Voilà. I have refreshed it. Shows me the number of male and female patients, the division by age. Here, the pathologies that are present in the database, the remedies are present in the database, and the pathologies per remedy that are present in the database. We're only at the beginning, but it is working already very nicely. So if I would like to search in this database, I can click here and I can search in many ways. Let's see, I want to look, see, look at the cases of Alloway. I tap the word Alloway, I click on search and I see, yes, indeed, I had done a test case five days before and also the case of today, December 7, 9.58, is there and can be looked at in this database. The consultations are there, the text is there, as you can see. So immediately available to the whole community if that is your wish. So radar up is a problem of possibilities. I must say I have gone through two thirds of what I wanted to tell you, but I would like to hand over the uh, or shall I say the microphone to Carlo, to questions. I'm sure Carlo has a few ideas to add and then maybe a few questions uh, to uh, uh, to answer to. So Carlo, can you take over for uh, some time now? Yes, yes. Uh, so you hear me now? Better? Yes. Yes, so. There are, uh, I, there are some questions. I have uh, answered to the chat all, all the questions that the, the people uh, is asking. And there is another uh, 
question how we can have an overview and to see overview of the successful case uh, i say yes you have to go in search frederick can you go in search patient search and search of patient search menu search uh, in the menu with the click uh, not in this yes search in uh, the patient file yes okay you open and here you can search in all your case according to different parameters for example i want to see all my arrow case or i want to see uh, all my case with the uh, arrow but uh, with the gaso scale uh, general in amelioration uh, plus than three or four and you can do this so the answer is yes this is one question and there is a last question uh we were rather doesn't uh, ah yes the technical reason why in rather in know in windows 10 we cannot open uh, um, we can open Radar Opus, but we cannot open uh, Radar 10. Yes, the problem is that uh, uh, Radar 10 is a, now is a very old program. Ten years ago, it uh, was uh, stopped and is running till uh, Windows uh, 7. So if you want to make some uh, test uh, with the Radar 10 and Radar Opus, we have to install uh, uh, Windows 7. In Radar 10, uh, in, Radar, in uh, Windows 10 and Windows 8, uh, Radar 10 cannot uh, run anymore. So there are, um, uh, okay, mm. yes, one, one of the case, uh, one of the user asked uh, how I can uh, copy some information from Jeremy, Jeremy Sher case taker. Uh, yes, you can do copy and paste uh, information from Jeremy Sher case taker into Radar Opus patient file, but you have, uh, you have to create, to, to, to work in the Windows 7 environment where you, you can run simultaneously Radar 10 and Radar Opus. Okay. Uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the last question is, uh, uh, so one people uh, uh, miss uh, the first uh, part of the Frederick presentation and uh, he asked if it's possible to, to, to see again the first part. I think the answer is yes, because the, yes. the seminar is recorded. Yes. Uh, how many, yes, how many remedy we can compare? There is a maximum limitation of 10. Okay, so we can make a, a Aloe, yeah, Frederick, you can go no ino, you can add carcinosino, mapis, blah, 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 you, you can compare. Uh, you just, you just uh, continue to add remedies, okay? Okay. Uh, update. Okay, yes. So, I Are have, there I have questions? Asked, no, no, there are no any more questions, Frederick. So, our idea is to... I apologize to those who come too late, but maybe it's good to clarify it. Our idea is to do one hour webinars. We'll start on time and we'll end on time. So please come online, tell your friends to come online five to 10, even 15 minutes before so they can test and resolve all the issues, technical issues, to feel comfortable with the medium. And we'll be repeating this every few weeks. And I would like to invite everybody to give feedback through our page book, a uh, Facebook uh, uh, page. Uh, if you have topics you would like to discuss or questions you would like us to reply, we'll be happy to read them here. You can even comment on the proposals of other people. Our Facebook page here is also announcing the webinars, as you can see here, well in advance, telling you how to subscribe for any next upcoming webinar. So stay connected to us through Facebook. You can also subscribe to our newsletters and we'll be happy to send you the information on any next event. So thank you very much for being there. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, we will uh, be very happy to have your questions and reply to all of them. And I'm sure some of the representatives have been attending this seminar. Rene, Peter Hasman, I've seen, maybe others. They'll also be available to uh, further your questions you may have had on the basis of this uh, webinar. Thank you very much and hear you next time. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you.